and welcome to a Smur P video. And today we are looking at Transformers Beast War issue 10, which is released by IDW. And we have this lovely, beautiful cover. So um, I always get cover B with this series, um, which is good because I'm sure there's lots of variants that would tempt me. And down here we get the Beast Wars 25, which is very nice. And this is a beautiful, beautiful cover. And it doesn't actually tell you who does the cover on these, which is a little bit interesting. So this is written by Eric Burnham, who is the the series lead. Oh, it's by, artist is still by uh, Josh Bertram. And letters is done by Jake M. Wood. And this is Maximal's Strike Back Part 1. And then we got a little previously going on. And then we got all the characters. I love this little piece here. And they've added in Razor Beast and Skull in the middle because they're like friends, man, like BFFs, but they're on different sides. So the story begins with Artemis actually apologizing for um, being so defensive and taking that pacifist route. Uh, and now he wants to go on the offensive, um, which is much to the dismay of. Uh, Rat Trap, for example. And Dinobot talks about the golden disc that is found on an asteroid, and it's brought to the science of Ministry of Science, sounds like Hogwarts. Uh, <laughs> and um, they, they want to bury this golden disc under kind of rock. They don't want to share its potential for the threat of a revolutionary, which is, but they also want to tell the people as well that, hey, this is this, and this is that. So they're also having a hard time decoding it. And this is where Megatron comes in, and then we we think we know the sort of rest of the story. He knows what the golden disc is, he knows what it can do, and he knows where it leads him to Earth, ultimately to Energon and this time and space and that's another thing the golden disc has been through time and space a lot more than perhaps we were aware of so maybe there's a, a bigger story there I'm not sure so the objective is quite simple they are going to get into dark side they're going to damage as much as they can including trans warp and hopefully the disc, and that is it. Uh, in Dinobot's mind, that is not going as far as they should. They should be going that step further and killing the enemy. And the other thing is, Raw Ratchet says, well, by the time we walk there, we'll be kind of shattered, which is a good point. And they have built their own little ship. And Rat Trap used to have a friend called Box that was this sort of shape, which is weird. So they start to go off. Um, however, Rat Trap points out that we are not warriors, which reminds me a little bit of uh, G1, that that first second episode on Sherburn Dam. I can't remember which uh, little bot it was, whether it was Huffer or somebody said, we're not warriors like them. It's a similar aspect we are not warriors we're a science team and these are things that probably weren't explored enough in the beast war series because it's uh was designed a little bit different being comics you can tell certain things at a slow pace which is great and what we get here which we never got in the show was we are scientists we don't know what we're doing some of us are pacifists completely and why are we doing this you know so which enhances Artemis's original plan of defense. Defense, don't go out. However, he's seen that they cannot stay like that forever because if they do, they're going to end up dead. So, and Rat Trap also mentions that um, he he actually um, is going just to if his friends die, he just wants to know that they're dead rather than wandering, etc. So that's more of a, a, a fear thing as well. So they talk about how they can get in. They also talk about Razor Beast um, to try and not take out Skull, but using that relationship so that they don't 
so she doesn't get involved, etc., and, and fight because she is their strongest asset. And these are the Decept Decepticons, the Predacons that they should be taking out. Um, Cheetor decides he wants payback against Black Arachnia after their last encounter. So, Coach Scorpinox is here. He is saying that when we get on to Cybertron, you know, we need to be at our best. And because the Maximals there won't be pushovers like the Maximals here, etc. Uh, however, Pterosaur is not having anything. And he makes his thing. Megatron should be placed with a real leader who has vision. And that's where Megatron steps in. And this moment here reminds me of... Um, a G1 episode between Megatron and Starscream where he says, you know what? Go for it. This is your time. This is your opportunity. Do it. And, well, Soundwave says blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Megatron is not having that. He literally gets in there. He beats the crap out of Pterosaur quite easily. He talks about the, the Maximals being cowards. They're, you know, they're just going to cower in their thing. And I'm prioritizing what we should be doing for the future and around this golden disc. Because golden disc is his obsession. And then he goes to destroy him. However, Tarantulas saves the day, much to Megatron's dismay. But he says, it's not tactical to destroy. This is a valuable asset sort of thing. But when he says that, he's more of referring to, hey, you... <laughs> I want to use your parts if you're destroyed. There's no more usable parts. So, Ratchap is extremely nervous, which some of the other crewmates uh, notice. There's a little interaction with uh, Nynx and Rhinox. And some of these characters in this series are not getting enough screen time, in my opinion. Um, you know, we, we always end up focusing on Dinobot, Primal, Ratchap, Megatron, Pterosaur... There are lots of characters in here that do need to be explored a little bit more and time put into them. And sometimes it feels like that doesn't happen. They only get a couple of little segments sort of thing. And I know that sometimes that happens in building characters. And these are characters that we're already familiar with. But sometimes I want a little bit more for my writer. Um, and anyway, Reinhardt says we know he, he would want to do anything but be fighting the Predacons, including sniffing daisies. So, um, Dinobot made some modifiers to the ship. Oh, I can actually turn my page. And uh, he fires some rockets, which is pretty awesome. So, they all get down, and they check if anyone's damaged, and they said, but the only ones who could wouldn't. They, you know, this, and this is their, their arrogance now. Their arrogance is they didn't expect the Maximals to do anything. They expected them to cower. And not do anything however they have. Because today they are learning something new. Where is Megatron? And um, I love this little piece here. If I can zoom in a little bit. With the faceplate. He's got his weapons out. He is ready. Which I do dig. I do dig a lot. So um, we're finally starting to see the Maximals turn, turn the tide etc. And start fighting back um, but the character development has slowed down but I guess we did have a heavy uh, character development with an introduction of Razor Beats and a bit about Scold in the background and her etc so I hope those still continue do you know what even so I, I praise Ryan Parrott on uh, Power Rangers because he does this thing where he takes, he goes back in the past and he shows some of those characters that haven't been explored. So like Rita Repulsa, Zordon, and they're done in like three pages off the issue and then the rest is the story. You could easily do something with these characters similar to that. I'm not saying go steal the guy's idea, etc. because it's, uh, it's rude, but as far as I'm concerned, writing can... Uh, Comics isn't copyright. You can do whatever you want. This is about these characters, not about those characters anyway. So, you know, it's it's something that could easily be explored. Anyway, if you like my channel, please subscribe to my channel. We appreciate that. And like and comment. 
I always like hearing from um, people that watch my reviews, what you want to see, what can I do better, what do you enjoy about my reviews, what don't you enjoy about my reviews. I like all that stuff, you know. I'm an easygoing guy who wants your feedback, so I'm here to to deliver reviews for you as far as I'm concerned. Um, make sure you look after yourself and embrace geekiness. Take care. Goodbye.